Hello everyone, welcome to Birch and Lily. My name is Amanda and this is my podcast about knitting and cross stitch. Today is November 19th and I am coming to you one day before my podcast anniversary. Um, if you don't know what that means, last year on November 20th I uploaded my very first episode of this podcast and I've been doing this for a year now, which is crazy. I've been having so much fun and just love getting to share what I'm doing with all of you and YouTube compared, like I love Instagram, but the community you get through YouTube is just incredible. And this past year has been so awesome and I'm looking forward to another year, another year. <laughs> Yeah, it's just, it's been wonderful. So yay for a year of Birch and Lily. Um, so we've got that exciting news out of the way, I guess. Um, I will jump into quickly a couple admin type things. Um, there are two places that you can find me on the internet. The first is on Instagram at birch.and.lily and the second is on Ravelry at Birch and Lily. As well, if you enjoy this podcast and you've been coming back, Thank you so much. I appreciate it so much. And if you're new and just checking me out, I hope you enjoy. I hope you're inspired. And yeah, let's jump into what I've been working on. Actually, one more thing. I totally forgot. Before I do that, last episode, I had a giveaway running. Um, this giveaway was for me hitting a thousand subscribers on YouTube, which is insane. Um, and I drew the winner for that. So I will quickly show you the prizes again one more time. So this here is what I was giving away for my thousand subscriber giveaway. A whole bunch of beautiful yarn that hopefully whoever wins will get lots of use out of and make some pretty things. Um, yeah, I'll put this over here. <laughs> so yeah, I drew the winner for that this morning. And the winner is LL Bird. I'll have that put down below here. Um, but LL Bird, I'm assuming that's not your real name. Um, but my email is linked down below in the description. If you could please send me an email with your real name and your shipping information, I will get that prize out to you um, when I hear back from you. And I will say you have two weeks to get back to me. If I don't hear from you by the next podcast episode, I will draw a new winner um, just to keep it fair. I don't want to be waiting forever to hear from you. So... I hope that doesn't come across as mean, but I think that's a fair way to do it. If I don't hear from you by the next episode, I will give the prize to the next person that I draw. So yeah, let's jump into some finished objects. I have a couple finished knitting objects to show you guys. Let's start with a pair of socks, just because it was the first thing in my reach. I have been working on these for a little while. I have been showing them on the podcast. Um, these are my reindeer hoof socks. This is a pattern by Christy Houghton. I knit these out of Maker's Haven yarn in the colorway Spring is sure to follow. Um, it was a sock set and it came with a coordinating mini. And that's a really weird angle to hold them at. Here they are. They are still a little damp, so actually I'll hold them this way. They're still a little damp, so if they look a little funny, that is why I started blocking them last night and I had a feeling it wouldn't be enough time for them to dry, but I figured me. It still gives you a better look at what they look at. Look like English is not my forte today. <laughs> um, so yeah, here they are. Um, beautiful cabled pattern. I think I said last episode and I still totally agree with it. If you haven't knit um, cables before, this is a really simple, um, what's it called? Twist cross stitch. It's just two stitches that you're crossing. Um, but it gives such a beautiful effect. You can see it better on this side for some reason. Obviously these are not centered on the blockers. But yeah, and I did, okay, so what did I do for these? I cast on 64 stitches on a 2.25 millimeter needle. I did a Pico cuff. 
and I did a heel flap and gusset a slip stitch one with uh, garter panels on both sides and normal wedge toe yeah uh, these are a gift so hopefully they fit um, the only concern I have is it was a little while between me casting on both of these socks and the one cuff, let's see if I can do this. I don't know if you can tell, the one cuff is just ever so slightly bigger than the other one. I don't know if that's even showing. Oh, my finger's in the way. Uh, sorry, I have a little bit of a cold that has just started, so hopefully I can edit out all of my coughing and sneezing and sniffling. So yeah, I think there, now you can see, the one cuff is a little bit larger than the other one. Um, so what I'm going to do when I gift these, I'm going to make sure that I have some elastic thread on hand, and if the recipient finds that they are a little bit too loose or one is a little bit too loose, I will go and just um, weave some of that elastic thread in on the inside of the cuff and that should make it snug enough that they won't have any issues. Um, but yeah, I think all the problem was, I've noticed this lately on a couple pairs of socks and I don't know if it was because I was working on a color sweater, which I will show you next. Um, that my gauge changed a little bit because I have a couple socks where the one sock is just a little bit looser. Like you can even tell kind of on the bottom of it. You see how this sock here, it's nice and snug to the bottom of the blocker where this one's kind of got a little floppy area. I don't know. I'm sure they won't notice and if I don't say anything, it'll be fine. Okay, and I have one other finished object to show you guys. This I have been working on for a couple weeks. Um, I'm glad it's finished, but I do have a couple problems. So I will let you guys know about those and hopefully you can help me with the solution. Um, so this is my boot leather sweater. It is a pattern by Tristan Molina. I was test knitting this for her and the pattern did release this past weekend on November 15th. Um, so I guess I'll hold it up and show it to you guys first and then I will put it on. I'm not wearing it right now because it is warm and we know my never ending saga with my lights. It's too warm in here with them on, so I'm not wearing it the whole episode. Okay, so boot weather sweater. It is, oh, the color work is so pretty. And I think that's why I am, there, now you can see my face. I think that's why I'm so disappointed about the issues that I've had with it because I am so incredibly happy with the colors I chose. I'm so incredibly happy with the color work. I was on gauge while I was knitting it, and then we had some issues. So let's talk. So let's talk about those issues first, and then I'll put it on. Um, basically, what happened when I was knitting the sweater, I was on gauge. I had gauge perfectly. I even had real gauge, which is something I usually don't get. Usually, it's very off. Um, so I was on. I blocked it. It grew a little bit the gauge, which it didn't when I had swatched it. But the gauge grew a little bit when I blocked it and I was like, meh, whatever, that's fine. So I blocked it, took it off the mats, left it lying over the back of this chair, <laughs> left it lying over the back of this chair for maybe a day or two, waiting for a point in time where I had time to take pictures of it. When I put it on, it was so long, so long. I don't know, the only thing that I can think of that happened was it laying over the back of the chair, um, stretched it out, which is so weird to me. But I guess I've never knit a garment that is this heavy before. Um, I usually only knit with fingering weight. This is worsted weight. I guess I could tell you the colors. Um, this gray is by a dyer who's no longer dying, so I'm not gonna bother to say. Um, this green here is Dirty Truce from Leading Men Fiber Arts. Sandcastle from Leading Men Fiber Arts, and the red is Rusted from Leading Men Fiber Arts. All on a worsted weight. I knit the this on the called four needles, a four millimeter US six. Yes, a four millimeter US six and a five millimeter US eight. 
um, yeah, and I was on gauge and it was weird. And then I went to put it on to take the pictures and I was like, what the heck? This is not how it was before. So I will put it on and then we'll continue talking. Okay, so here we go. Look how long this is. What the heck? Um, I am about, I think we figured out I'm about four and a half inches longer than this should have been. Width wise, it's fine. I'm happy with this. It's supposed to be a baggy sweater, but I just feel ridiculous because it's so long. Um, and now that I've measured the gauge on it and stuff, now that I've had this fiasco, it's like so off. Um, mostly just the row gauge is off. Stitch gauge? Words are not my thing today. The rest of it is fine, row gauge is off. Um, like I'm super happy with the sleeves, they fit perfectly, the cuffs, the length, everything there is perfect, but the body is just ridiculous. So let's talk solutions. What I am thinking is that I'm going to soak it again and put it in the dryer. Um, that's the only thing I can think of to get it down to the size that I want. Because I think if I block it again, I'm just going to end up having the same problem. So I think I'm going to put it in the dryer. So what I have heard please let me know if I'm wrong, is that if you soak it and put it in the dryer and check it every 10 minutes until it's dry, I should get a garment bag actually to put it in before I do that. Um, but if you check it every 10 minutes until it's dry, it should shrink and hopefully not felt. <laughs> um, it is superwash, so like that's gonna help some for sure. I know superwash grows, but I've never had my superwash grow this much. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to put it in the dryer, which terrifies me because <laughs> I put so much work into this and money and, but I'm not happy with it. I, the length feels ridiculous to me. I'm a small person. I'm five foot one and it's almost my knees and I just, I don't feel pretty wearing it, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, just because of the length. Like I love everything else about it. It's beautiful. If you want to knit this, do it. <laughs> Just make sure you're watching your gauge the whole time and like babying the gauge. Um, yeah, so I'm going to do that sometime in the next two weeks and I will let you guys know how it goes. I hope it works, fingers crossed, because yeah, I would be sad if it didn't and it felted. Oh my gosh, if it felted, I would cry. Um, Cause it is, it's beautiful. Like I, I'm just in love with the colors. I wasn't so sure. I was just kind of taking a gamble, doing something different. Cause I'm like, I love gray. There's still gray in it. Um, but I usually gravitate, gravitate towards like purples, blues, mauve colors. So like this is super different. And I love it, and I don't want to wreck it. So, yeah. Enough rambling about wrecking this sweater. I'm going to put it in the dryer. We will see what happens. I will keep you posted. Um, but, yeah, if you do know something else that might work, let me know down in the comments. I'll wait a couple days before I do anything just to see if anyone else has any less terrifying sounding ideas. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is my boot weather sweater and I'm taking it off because I'm too warm. Okay, let's jump into some works in progress, shall we? Okay, so the first project I have is a new cast on from last episode. Um, I'm holding it in this beautiful little wintry birch grove bag. Absolutely love it. The little fox is so cute. Um, I'm starting to pull out my Christmas project bags just because it's fun. Um, and as I say that, this is the only thing that's in a Christmas project bag, but um, I will pull out some of my other ones after I record this episode. So next episode, everything's going to be a different bags, but that's okay. So this is a pattern by Ambrose Smith. It is called the Marianne Socks, and I actually already have one sock finished, so I'm going to put that on a blocker. 
Okay, so I think I had mentioned last episode that I am working really, really hard to have all of my gift knitting cross stitch stuff done before the end of this month because I want December to be fun. I don't want to feel rushed and like I have a whole bunch of stuff to finish and I'm running out of time and I want it to be all done so that I can do whatever the heck I want. Um, so this is well on the way to having that done. So I am knitting these socks, which I guess I can show you. Look how pretty. I am knitting this pair of socks on a 2.25 millimeter US1 needle. I cast on 64 stitches, did a two by two rib, and everything else is to pattern. So this yarn, let's start with that. I got this yarn at the Ann Arbor Fiber Expo. It is Kettle Steps from Good For You. Um, they're definitely a new to me dyer, but this feels beautiful. Actually, let me grab the tag and I'll tell you what the content is of this yarn because I've never used yarn like this before. Okay, trusty tag in the middle of my yarn cake. The content. So there is 40% superwash merino, 40% baby llama, and 20% nylon. It's so oh, soft. I would say it's fuzzier than most of the yarn I've worked with before. Like, I don't know if you can see the little tendrils coming off of the sock, but I don't think it's a bad thing because it is soft. It is so soft. Um, yeah, I'm very happy with it. Um, so this is a gift. This is for my mother-in-law. She does not watch this, so I'm not worried about saying that. Um, so yeah, I have the first sock done. This pattern is actually one of those patterns where each foot is different. Um, this beautiful lace, cable-y, no, it's not cables, it's lace. This lace pattern um, is on opposite sides on each sock. Um, and then there's this, I guess like honeycomb -y type pattern running around the rest of the sock um, with a garter stitch heel flap and gusset or garter panel heel flap and gusset. I'm so sorry that this is all so scattered today. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's because I'm sick. <laughs> I can't uh, articulate well. Um, but yeah, so the first sock is complete. This sock fits the blocker well. I don't know why that other one's so baggy. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> but I have started the second sock. So this sock, I am working actually on the heel flap right now. So the needles are doing a little bit of wonky stuff, but um, we'll still show you. So here is the second sock. See how the leg is complete. I am working currently on the heel flap and then I will be motoring. Once I get past the heel flap and gusset, I swear socks fly. The cuff and the leg and the heel flap and gusset seems to take forever for me and then I can get a foot done in a day. I don't know why. I'm not complaining. It's kind of nice. Um, but yeah, it flies after that. So. These are my Marianne socks, which will be done next episode, I promise. And um, I am quite enjoying them. They're really good. The pattern is easy to memorize. It's just uh, four rows in the repeat. So it's been really good to watch or work on while we're watching TV in the evening. And I've really been enjoying it. And I've really been enjoying the baby llama in this yarn. I think I will have to hunt for some more yarn with baby llama in it. Um, baby llama wool. They must have wool if it's a sock. Okay, so that is my only new start whip. Um, everything else you have seen before. So let's jump into those. The next sock that I have on the needles is my Desert Vista Dye Works pair of socks for this month, the month of November. And they are in this little bag by Tiny Human Knits. Soon to be in a Christmas bag. <laughs> I am knitting these out of the Zombody Are You colorway uh, from her Alice in Wonderland collection, Desert Vista Dye Works. 
and I haven't got tons done. Oop. Yeah, I haven't got tons done. I have been neglecting these because of gift knitting, but I should uh, get my button gear on these because I don't have that much left. I have like, is there 30 days in November? So I have like 11 days. Yeah, I better get my button gear on these. Um, so yeah, I've knit that much since the last episode. These are as well on 2.25 millimeter needles. Uh, 64 stitches with a 2x2 two two rib. And I don't know if I said that this pattern is Heel Toe do -si do by the Crazy Sock Lady. I love it. Again, easy to memorize. Um, I don't even have to have the pattern in front of me now. It's a two row repeat. Like, perfect. Um, but yeah, actually, probably where the little sheep stitch marker is, that is from Corner of Craft, if you're wondering. That's probably about where I would put the heel in, so maybe I should go and pop the afterthought heel in now um, so that I can figure out how to make the sock fit perfect. Usually what I'll do is I'll put my first afterthought heel in before the sock is done and then knit that sock to fit me perfectly and then the second sock I'll just put stitch markers along the back just to figure out where it has to go. The second sock I'll knit the whole tube and then do the afterthought heel. Um, so maybe I should get that afterthought heel into this pair of socks and I think that'll make me move a little faster on them uh, just because I can know where I have to end them. So yeah. Heel toe do -si do highly recommend for your self-striping yarn. It makes it so pretty, like this chevron, but then you still get to see how beautiful the self-striping is on the back by itself. And then I have one more pair of self-striping socks on the needles. You have seen these months and months and months and months ago. These were supposed to be an anniversary gift in June for my husband. Whoops. So I have resurrected these and I'm working on them for Christmas now. So I do have, actually there's a progress keeper on here from uh, the last episode where I was. So the first sock is done. Um, let me tuck in my ends here. I'm not going to put it on a blocker because he has massive feet and these don't fit a blocker. He has size 12 feet. Um, but that little teeny tiny Yoda progress keeper. I wonder if I can show it to you guys and it'll focus. It's so cute. That is where I was last episode. So the first sock is done. Um, I cast on 64 stitches for these. They're a little bit snug, but I think once they're blocked, they will fit him just fine. He said he needs like a millimeter more space, so I'm not too worried. But here is the continuing saga of my gauge changing. Um, these socks, the gauge is so different, the second pair. Um, so what I ended up doing, I held the two legs up to each other and they match in length. The amount of rows that this second sock has compared to this one is very different, um, but they match in length, the stripes match, and so I said, whatever I'm putting in the heel flap. So that is what I have done with this second pair here. Um, I should get this heel flap and guess it done so that I can have it for movie knitting because um, there are quite a few movies that we have that we would like to see soon. So I should get that rolling and then this will be the perfect movie knitting to bring with me, especially since the foot is so big. <laughs> I can just knit, knit, knit and not have to worry about having knit too far. So, yeah, that is uh, my husband's very overdue anniversary, now Christmas socks. Um, and they are in another Birch Grove bag. This was, I think, a limited edition one, um, part of some sort of special set, but super cute. Soon will be a Christmas bag. Okay, so that is all that I have for knitting content this episode. Um, Hopefully next episode all of my Christmas knitting will be done and I'll have lots of fun new cast-ons and stuff to show you and projects picked up that have been neglected for a little while. I'm really looking forward to that. I have hit the point now where 
I'm done with Christmas knitting and it's kind of a slog, but I know if I pick something else up, I'll never finish those. So I just need to get them done. And they're all so close and it'll be done soon. So I have, moving on to cross stitch, I have two finished objects to show you and I don't actually have any works in progress. Um, yeah, I haven't picked anything up out of my bin of works in progress back there though because like I said, I wanna get the knitting done before I allow myself to do anything new. So I will show you the works in progress. I'm going to start with my t-ball ornament that I had showed you guys last episode. I mean finished objects, not works in progress. Um, but I will show you the t-ball ornament here quickly. It is done and it is so cute. I am really, really happy with this. Um, I did change one color that was called for in this border here. Uh, where the red is, it actually called for the same color as this star in the middle, but I just wasn't feeling the goldy yellow color. It just doesn't feel as Christmassy to me, so I changed it to the red. Um, and otherwise, everything is the called for colors. Um, this T-ball ornament is a pattern by um, Heartstring Samplery. That took a while. This is a pattern by Heartstring Samplery, and it actually comes with four patterns for big t-balls and then four patterns for like the little ones. So I definitely will be making some more later. I am done with them for this year. <laughs> um, but yeah, I am so, so happy with that. So I only stitched on the one side only because I figured if I stitched on the second side, you would be able to see the back of the stitching from the front. Plus when it's hanging on a tree, you really only see the one side anyways. So yeah, it's kind of fun to spin it. <laughs> um, but I'm very happy with this and I really, really hope that my mother-in-law enjoys it. And here comes the point in the episode that my mom knew about. You need to shut off the video, mom, because this is one of your Christmas presents. And if you watch and spoil it, I'll be disappointed and you'll be disappointed too. I love you very much, mom, but you have to go now. <laughs> um, so bye, mom. And let's jump into this next finished object. So this is the Harvest Chock Full Mason Jar cross stitchy thingy from Hands On Design. And I actually started and finished this within the span of the last episode. It is a quick stitch. Quick, quick, quick. Um, I stitched this on, what did I stitch this on? 32 count chalkboard black linen. I actually really like the color of this linen. It is stiff though. I'm not 100% sure how I feel about the feel of it, but the color of it is perfect. Um, but here we go. So if you're familiar with the chalk folds, you can see that something is different. What I did, um, I wanted my mom to be able to keep this up all year. So I took the words off of the mason jar. Um, I should have popped a picture up a couple seconds ago of what it should look like. Um, it should say harvest and mason here. Um, I was going to leave mason, but then I thought that would be weird, so I just took it all off and pretended it was a jar with nothing on it. Um, otherwise, everything is called for to pattern. The colors are all called for. Um, I stitched this two threads over two, and I love the little Smyrna crosses. I don't know if you can see them in the middle of the sunflowers. But yeah, I am so, oh, actually, one other thing. The jar itself, I actually stitched one over two, just to, it was called for in the pattern just to make the jar look a little bit more jar-like. Um, but yeah, I'm very happy with this. I hope my mom loves it. Um, I'm not quite sure how I want to finish it yet, if I wanna do some sort of flat finish or frame it, or I gotta kinda think about the um, stuff my mom has decorating the house already and kind of think where it would look well in their house and then I will decide from there. But um, very happy with that. Excited it's done. It went so fast and it was super fun. Um, and I really hope she loves it. So that brings us to the end of this podcast anniversary episode. 
Not that anything was super special <laughs> about it, but um, thank you so much for watching, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed. If you've been here for the full year, my biggest... Oops, I touched my mic. <laughs> if you have been here for the full year of me uploading episodes, my biggest heartfelt thank you to you. And if you have found me within that year, still, thank you so, so much. This has been so much fun for me and such a nice way to be able to share what I'm doing with all of my friends in the crafty community. And yeah, I couldn't thank you enough. Um, so yeah, if one other thing, if the winner, again, a reminder, the winner of the giveaway, please contact me, LL Bird, that's what it is. Please contact me in the email down below and let me know that you have won and give me your shipping information. You have two weeks to do so. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, please do that. You'd be awesome. Hit that little like button, ring the bell to get notifications. I think that's what the YouTube people usually <laughs> say. I don't know, but thank you so much and take care. We will see you again in two weeks. Bye.